All right, guys. This is going to be a very competitive match. Ooh, one of the very first probes being sent out. This could be the Max Packs build. We're going to see about that in a moment. I can't imagine it's anything else. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Uh, Trigger versus Clem. This is a match that I'm, I'm pretty hyped about. There's the first pylon. Now, when you send one of the first probes, that is how you do the Max Packs build. We're going to see in a second if he goes over here and throws down his own pylon. Uh, in a proxy location, but there's an SCV coming out. He's going to see it. Jesus. Crazy. Now, we don't know that he was going to proxy the gate. I'll just throw this out there. You know, the Max Packs, when Max Packs was still an unknown low GM player, BCQD played him and made some videos about it. Uh, and in those videos, he showed this very specific build where you send one of your first probes across the map, you build a pylon in your main, and then you make a proxy gate. You build the pylon in the main because you need it for making probes because it takes that long for the probe to get over there. Uh, and then you just, you proxy a gateway and then you start making units and you basically force them to cancel their command center in your head. Okay. Max Pax made that build when he was a little nubbling, like a new GM player instead of one of the best Protoss in the world. <clears throat> so I thought that might be what Trigger was doing. He could have been sending it for other purposes. That's my guess is what he was doing. Uh, but Clem scouted it like instantaneously. And look at that. Trigger builds up his health, goes back, attacks the SCV. Clem will probably pull this back when the when the probe charges back up. Okay, so uh, let me explain why I think this is a great match, by the way. Right? So Clem is highly aggressive, very micro-based, very tempo-oriented. Trigger likes to slow the game down. He's very macro-oriented. He's he, he slows the game to a... A very defensive crawl. He doesn't even use... Well, he's started to use Warp Prisms more because he's continuing to improve, but, like, he uses them less than other, any other Protoss of his level, right? Like, he just... He's all about building a great core army, getting a great economy up, and he's got great defense. He's basically, like, the next coming of stats, okay? So, it's, like, the most defensive Protoss that we have in the scene against absolutely one of the most aggressive Terrans. So they just, they have completely conflicting styles, which is going to make this super interesting. Now, a Stargate coming up here for Trigger. Clem coming by, and he's going to get that probe, so that's a nice kill. Very, very solid kill for him. Yeah, not going to be able to quite get this Reaper out of there. Rain stats trigger the line of defensive Protoss players. Yeah, uh, stats was like twice as defensive as Rain, just to make this clear. But Rain was the best defensive Protoss we had had up to the point where he was playing. Uh, Rain, I think, would have been the best Protoss ever in StarCraft 1 or StarCraft 2 if he would just have remained playing them for long enough. And he just, he won't. He, I think he's just too talented. It's hard to keep those guys interested, I think. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, uh, stats and trigger are very close stylistic stylistically to each other. Very, very, very close. All right, so, uh, you know, Clem going down. He's going to go ahead and expand. He's getting ready for his mind drop. Phoenixes are out and about patrolling a little bit. We have more Phoenixes being made, double geysers. So we should see a Robo get started. There it is. Uh, you're just always going to go Colossus with this. Now that's a four mind drop. Okay, so how he deals with this is going to reverberate through the rest of the game. Incredibly important that Trigger minimizes probe death against this. If there's any big hits, Clem will probably win the game. Excuse me. All right, here he comes. Gets spotted very late. Very late. So that's good for him. Gonna start dropping him out. Two, two come down. Okay, that was kind of funny. Uh, hopefully he blocks everything in the main. Okay, six probes already. Oh, Clem was actually a little bit slow in getting those out. Sick lift. Okay, this was good. This was a good block overall. The six probes, he didn't even need to lose six there. Like, honestly, he, he was a little bit sloppy in his natural, then he cleaned everything else pretty well. Uh, but yeah, six probes going to end up falling. 
And Clem does get out with the medevac, at least for now. He is kind of combing for the medevac. He expected the medevac to try to go home. And you can actually see on the minimap the pattern he's flying in. He thinks he's about to catch it, and he's not. So he might look at that and say, oh, I was maybe a second behind it or something. And it's already back home. So he probably won't check where Clem left it. So where Clem left it is actually an insanely good mind game. An insanely good mind game that he just parks it there. Dude. It's fucking brilliant. And look, now Clem moves. Now Clem moves. High quality shit we're looking at right now. This is this is good stuff. Third Nexus is on the way. Colossus Thermalance started. And now a little bit of harassment from Trigger. He's going to lose one of his uh, Phoenixes immediately, getting nothing but a single SCV kill. So not the greatest, greatest first pass. You are going to have to be careful not to lose too much here. Uh, the Phoenixes, you know, they are going to be very, very important for helping to hold any pushes out that Clem does. And I think you're going to have to really focus on getting a good Colossus count right now. Nailing your... E oh, no! My fucking coffee spilt all over everything! Oh, fuck me! Oh. 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 God. Sag. All over my fucking beautiful mouse pad. Oh, man. God damn it. Oh. All right, I don't know. Some sort of push is coming. Fuck this game. Oh, bitch. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, yeah, he, he busts that first tank. So far, it's looking pretty good. There is a drop up into the natural. The Phoenixes can deal with this, but there's another drop going towards the main. So Clem is trying to buy some time with this get him out of position while that drop goes into that main base. It's not the biggest drop in the whole world. Two probes die. Like, the overall probe death count here is really one of the important things to look at. Oh my god, what type of pylon is that pylon right there? Damn, dude. That is a lot of stuff on power. Trigger, definitely a fan. Wild. I have to clean this mouse pad tomorrow. My god. Gross. Ugh. Sorry, guys. I really spilt a lot of coffee on my mouse pad. I'm very sad. All right. <sighs> yeah, too much caffeine for my mouse pad. My mouse pad is not even a year old. It could be taken away from me from mouse pad protective services for giving it that much caffeine. All right, so he's got everything repowered now. Charge going to finish, plus one going to finish. Now, here Clem goes. He's going to continue to apply this pressure. Two medevacs in the main, or the natural, rather. Uh, and he is trying to attack here. And actually, that's some good Phoenix micro there. He keeps the claw sight in range of the shield battery to make that a little bit easier. Uh, he does eat the hit there with the uh, Colossus. I actually think that that was purposeful uh, because it barely goes beyond shield. So it's like, it's okay. It's okay. I trade a, trade a few Colossus hit points to just clear a mine instantly. Makes sense to me. Uh, I think he's holding pretty well so far. And that, that that's actually what this game should be looking like, right? Based on the way that I described. By the way, Ghost Academies are funny because they look, when they're being built, way bigger than they're going to be. Normally, StarCraft buildings aren't like that. They build out to their size, like Terran buildings. Whereas this one looks more like how humans build buildings, where, like, you'll have all these, you know, all these, all these towers of fucking ladders and things like around a steeple of a church that you're building and then you take it away and the, obviously that's like smaller but yeah i'm just saying ghost academies look funny when they're being built it looks like it's a barracks or something it turns out much smaller scaffolding that's it that's right sometimes it's hard to think of words like that that i never use when's the last time i said scaffolding very good very good Okay. So, anyways, uh, like I was saying, this is what the game kind of should look like. Trigger has to get a fourth base right now. You see he's moving into position for that. Uh, but Clem is sitting on three base. Trigger's sitting on three base. You you need to stay a little bit ahead as Trigger here. 
as far as the bases go. Um, Clem is getting ghosts. He's continuing to make Vikings. But as long as Trigger continues to, like, hold as well as he has, he'll continue to gain some value. Now, here's something about TVP. Uh, you know, Terran, like, they do level up their army throughout the game. Like, they'll add in some ghosts. They'll get better Viking counts. They'll, you know, maybe they'll go Liberators later, things like that. But Protoss army, really, it's kind of like mech where it, it scales up, like, much. It scales up insanely. Like, the army at this size with these units in it is so much stronger than if you have half of that. Whereas you cut half of the Terran army off and you're like, okay, that's basically the same. Right? Uh, so yeah, it's like what Trigger needs to do is continue to climb towards Max while retaining his valuable units. Whereas with Clem, it's like, well, he wants to trade out as much as possible. He wants to get damage whenever, whenever that's a, a possibility. Second starport is on the way. A little bit of harassment coming, but Clem's micro quite good. Clem does pull his entire army back during this, and I think that that was a safety precaution so he could micro heavily on one screen. If you leave your army out on the map, you notice how Trigger walked forward. Dude, I want to pause and like rewind and show you, but like basically as he was over microing there, or it's not even over microing because what he did is clicked his army back. Trigger actually clicked out to try to find the army, hoping that the distraction would allow him to shave off a part of it, but Clem was too on top of it, right? So really good moves. Uh, ooh, finding a good angle right there. A very good angle. Uh, gonna kill off some of the probes there. Did some damage to the Colossi. It's not end of the world. The Vikings still looking for these good angles. The good blink from those stalkers to kind of prevent that. Oh, a nice EMP. Starting to push up this ramp. Look at this flank. Look at this flank, man. Trigger coming around. He's really made a beautiful army at this point. He does have a prism in there that's not really doing too much. Pulls it back a little bit. Probably doesn't want that to get picked off. The charge lot's coming out to the front. Very nice. He should, I think, this should Trigger keep chasing this? Yeah, he's going to blink forward and try to kill some of these medevacs. I think as it goes up this ramp, though, you may want to consider turning around. I'd be a little bit nervous that Clem is going to have reinforcements up here. That was excellent EMPs, a good mine hit as well. Just about all of his shields are gone, but Trigger continues to push. Really has a great feel for this position. And it seems like he's just going to knock Clem on his ass here. Oh, my God. Really excellently played by Trigger. He's kind of going after the, the orbital, but not quite gonna eliminate a lot of these scvs his claws i are almost dead okay only one remains is there a point where you need to pull back here again i felt a couple times like i'm like i don't know do you go up this ramp you know he's eventually clem is gonna turn on you with a big arc and make this very very difficult but it seems like trigger stayed as long as he felt like he could and i think that he judged that unbelievably well unbelievably well He's been very efficient. Okay, there is a little mine. Well, that's cute. That's cute. I like it. Uh, good multitasking there from Clem. But you can see Trigger has built up to this really powerful army. He retained a decent amount of it. It's not perfect, but a decent amount. And, he, you know, he's going to be producing uh, once again here. He is getting a second Robo, which I think realistically he probably should already have. Uh, but that is definitely going to help him out. He has plus three attack on the way, whereas Clem has three three on the way. Only one armor upgrade for Trigger, so that's a little bit off. That's okay. Dark Shrine coming up. And some Disruptors going to be added in. Alright, fifth Nexus coming up here. Clem is on four base, so you do need to get into that. Yeah, going to be able to pick off some probes. Very annoying. And he's coming in for a flank with a disruptor. This is a brilliant, beautiful move. Watch this. Forces Clem forward. Okay. Well, Clem didn't have to walk too far forward there. And in fact, is starting to beat the army. So like this flank didn't work out as well as I think he thought it might. And then you do get the warping of the Zealots. But this is kind of hilarious. Like that... The way Trigger set that up, it looked like he might be able to win the game off of a move of that quality. 
And then Clem's like, yeah, I don't know. I, my army's good enough. And then he just kind of plows through everything. Uh, more disruptors coming up. Has Clem actually won this game? He has. GG. Kind of a, a crazy turnaround there. Really, really well done by Clem. We got to give him that one. That was that was good. A trigger's push was really quite excellent. He was trying to replace his, his robotics units. Um, you know, I like the flank of the disruptor the ID. Yeah. Donated three dollars and thirty-three cents. What's RT, up? I just received some very unsettling info. I know Swati is already banned from PEI for being a pervert, but I feel like I need to warn you anyways. I won't go into the details because I always want to keep the TTS clean, but keep Swati away from Moxie. Moxie loves all humans. She's like the friendliest dog in the whole world. All right, let's go. Game number two. All right, down here in the bottom left, we have Clem. Up here in the top right, we have Trigger. Uh, you know, that first game, I think that was quite an excellent game. Um, Yeah, really back and forth. Felt like anyone could end up taking that. Clem may be showing that he is still a little step above Trigger. I did not expect a victory there. The flanking Disruptor looked really good, which pushed him forward into the Immortals a little bit more, but it seemed like Trigger was a little bit low on what units he needed to shred that army as it walked forward. It's the best food they have in PEI. My wife's cooking. Yeah, they're known for mussels, lobsters, and potatoes. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, we just got to kind of wait here for a minute. See what uh, opening builds are going to look like. You know, uh, that was a Phoenix opener. I think something like that could be a little bit harder to play against Clem. I wouldn't mind his two-gate blink robo third base build. I feel like that's Trigger's best overall build. I'd be kind of surprised, actually, if he does not do it this game. Because that seems to be his main fallback, right? Well, just uh, very standard openers. Should be seeing that factory go down. Yeah, there it is. Nothing too surprising at the moment. Got to wait and see uh, on Clem's side what he wants to get up to. You know, with Protoss, you do have the choices. Uh, and it's normally Stargate versus Twilight. And it's normally uh, Phoenix versus Oracle as far as that Twilight goes, right? That's... That's the general macro openers. For Terran, you have you have a bit more room there. I'm not going to call three racks like a, a, a solid opener. I think that's kind of a fringe opener, even though Bion does it a lot. Uh, but, you know, you, it's like, okay, do we want to do just Reaper Nexus? Do we want to do Factory Nexus? Are we going to go, you know, for the Hellion, are we going to go Mines? Are we going to go, you know, more defensive units? Do we want to follow this up, you know, with uh, a Medivac very quickly? Do we want to get quicker Stim? You know, there's, there's a kind of like a bigger range of openers for Terran that feel like they have uh, what it takes to, to push the game forward into a macro game. Whereas if you open up, let's say you open up charges to Protoss, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> what are you doing? Right? Is this just a, a, some crazy attack? That type of thing. So uh, right now, Clem getting some great damage done. Yeah, picks off Trigger's first Adept. That has to be highly annoying. Phoenix is once again on the way. I find it slightly surprising. Maybe that's just what Trigger's into right now. You know, a lot of times people will, like, practice a build a lot in a given week and then just use it in their tournaments that week. Definitely something that we see. Wow. Okay, so does end up getting the pick off on that one Reaper, but a Reaper and a, a Hellion getting through are going to cause some some issues. Another Reaper is at the natural. Wow, this, this split from Clem is very, very good. Dude. Oof. Okay, nice citizen's arrest. Does save that one very orange probe. So it's not as bad as it looked like it was going to be. Because honestly, for a moment there, I'm like, this is going to be five, six probes. 
Uh, but no, only gets three and a couple of units, but he does lose his entire fighting force that he had over there. But uh, Clem's fall up is very good against Phoenixes. He's focusing on Vikings, on uh, Cyclones, on Marines. Uh, in fact, you know, this is something that TY used to like to do. This was many, many years ago, but same type of idea here, right? If you make, like, for instance, a uh, Cyclone, two Vikings, and you have a bunch of Marines, sometimes you can just walk across the map when Protoss takes a third with Phoenixes and kill it because they just, your anti-air damage output is a little bit too high and they just, like, they can't sustain the Phoenixes really fighting against it. We'll see if Clem goes for something like that. Nah, he's making a couple add-ons. Like, it looks like he's going to go for a more regular mid-game type of push. Probably start his third command center relatively soon here. I got to flip this star port over. Probably has to get a reactor on that ASAP. Charge Phoenix for Traeger. Okay, so Charge Phoenix is a funny, funny build. Uh, it's hard. First off, you got to optimize it really super well because none of it really scales up well. The beginning of the engagement is incredibly, incredibly important. Uh, if your opponent starts cutting back and actually has a critical mass, it's like, I've seen this build lose so many times. I, In fact, I almost only have memories of this build losing. Uh, and that was even back in the day when charge uh, gave the zealots the plus eight damage on impact and that was with zest making the build you know and zest is the the best optimizer protoss ever had so it's like you put all that together i'm like i don't know man i'm not i'm not a fan of this build like i want to see trigger win so we can go into a nice game number three but i'm not a fan of the build i feel like what you have to do is you have to outscale it uh right like pure charge lot is not going to go well and it's a little bit hard to judge on this when you need to get into your robo units. He's making pure zealots right now. Oh, there's a mine there. Oh, no. Okay, it's a decent split at least. Decent split at least. But, you know, that's some heavy hull damage on two of the phoenixes. And he is making a hell of a lot of phoenixes right now. Pure zealots being made. He has that one sentry, uh, you know, for that, for that guardian shield. Four more gates on the way. And, like, he's kept his supply pretty close. He does want Clem to move out right now. Just to make this clear, this is what Trigger wants with the build. He needs to catch an army like this and kill it. If he does it one time, okay, we're good to go, right? Oh, nice pickoff, nice pickoff. He has to bring his Phoenixes back right now, though. He needs these Phoenixes to have a chance against this incoming push. That's a, that's a healthy amount of Zealots. Okay, see the first charge? How it doesn't do it? That makes me a little bit nervous for him here. The Phoenix is being targeted down. Okay, secondary charge comes up. Picks up both the Siege Shanks. So the Siege Shanks will die as he drops them. You know, Clem gets away with more than half his army. He picks off a lot of Phoenixes. Yeah, he loses the Siege Tanks, but if he gets behind this wall... That's a third command center being built on location, by the way, which that, like, I feel like Trigger minimum needs to force a cancel on that. And see, like, if you're kind of playing back like this, or you can get between the wall, it seems really hard for Trigger to get the engage he's looking for. More and more Zealots come out. I feel like I'm watching SOS almost right now. He's like, yeah, <laughs> let's let's go. Okay, this flank. The thing is, look where he's standing in between the, the geyser. Like, you're not getting good surface area. He has the tank on the high ground. He has Marines on the high ground, adding in their damage as well. And, well, I mean, there's just so many Zealots. But, but, and I mean, it sucks that he, he forced to cancel there. Like I was saying, he needs that minimum. Look at the supply. 44 against 45. Who has a better army? It's Clem by miles. By miles, he has a better army right now. So, even though Trigger got that kill, even though Trigger's taken a fourth base... I'm still pretty confident that Clem is going to take this. Now, we have the uh, robotic support bay coming up. That's very important. He needs to get some rebel units out. He needs to get some splash damage out because these, uh, these interactions are not going to go well. You know, as you continue to mass up, you're outscaling the Zealots. This is such an important thing to think about. You can overmake units of almost any type to kind of win battles that you look at and you're like, what? Wow, that was crazy. You had a lot of those, right? Adepts, roaches, 
zealots, hell, even stalkers, right? Like, these things can occur. But if your opponent realizes what's going on and starts to outscale, they start to get... Like, for instance, with charge lots, right? Like, you saw how he walked back into a choke. He made the surface area not so good. The bigger you make your bio ball, the more damage output you have. And it's like the surface area isn't getting way bigger for all those zealots, right? It's like you have a lot of zealots that are charging around in the back. They're not really connecting. And you just start to absolutely wipe the army. So while charge lots are really good, it's a very strong unit. You know, th this is one of the problems that we can have with it. All right, so he stops those mind drops, but get his, gets a good idea of what's going on. Clem going to land his new third base. Trigger has his fourth base mining. He's got two forges going. He's got thermal lance making. He's got blink making. There are some very, very redeeming things going on right now uh, on Trigger's side of the map, right? Again, not a, a big fan of the strategy that he's chosen, but he's played it reasonably well. He's getting an army that looks more and more like it might be able to fight. I don't feel like it's quite there. You know, one Colossus is, is not the scariest thing in the world. It's not going to deal that much damage in an upcoming fight. You know, the more open this area is, the better charge he can get, right? So, oh, that force field was that force field was good, but a nice hot pickup goes behind the force field. Now that uses the force field against you, an issue here for trigger to say the least. Takes a lot of damage on that claw side. Gonna run back to a shield battery, overcharges it. I think that's an excellent overcharge. A lot of times people wait for that for a battle, but his units were so badly hurt. I think he needs it. Okay, here we go. Comes in with the charge again, and he's got some flanks coming in. Aren't your flanks protected? LOL. Uh, but does he have enough to actually break through here? You see the Zealots get peeled down immediately. And then it's like, well, the Stalkers kind of have to back up. There are a couple Colossi here. Clem backing up as well. Still has that supply advantage. Look at the production tabs as well. That's, that's telling you a lot of this story. Clem has a lot going on. Always enjoy that type of move. Who needs observers when you can just attack your own units? The Protoss way for sure. All right, coming up, and he is going to force a cancel on that command center. So that's pretty nice. That's two canceled command centers so far this game. So that's very annoying for Clem Death to deal with. The Colossi trying to poke in. You got to be careful here as Clem. You have to take this engage right. This engage might decide the game. Those two Widow Mines still getting ready to reset. They actually might ruin things here for Trigger. We'll see about that. But comes in and he actually lifts. I'm surprised he lifts the command center because it felt like that was actually helping him there. But yeah, now the mines are back and they're going to go ahead and help take those out. Clem has to tap out though. Trigger able to push in, able to get that victory. Very nicely done. I, I think he executed the build quite well overall. Uh, it did look a little bit iffy a couple times there. But you can see how it, it can be hard, uh, you know, if, if Clem is taking the right positions and everything. I think if he does, if Clem is building his third command center in his main base, I think the whole game looks different. That was, it was a really important moment, right? Because he's building it on location. That's how confident he was. Uh, but against the strategy he was against, that's going to be the wrong choice every time because over time their army is getting weaker. Anyways, we are going directly into game number three. Let's see who's going to take this. Really well, well um, matched players. Yeah, thank you to whatever mod put up that bracket command. It's appreciated. All right, we're on Royal Blood for game number three, the deciding game between Clem in the bottom left and Trigger in the top right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Don't Defense. You're doing great. Or not Don't Defense, sorry. All right. Now we just kind of wait for a little bit. Yeah, some very interesting games between these two. Trigger is really impressing me here today. I mean, he impresses me a lot. You know, we follow him a lot through these tournaments. I think he's... The future of uh, North America. 
as far as StarCraft 2 goes. And yeah, I think he's he's kind of showing it. Um, you know, Clem. Obviously, Clem's always playing well. So a little bit of harassment here from this uh, this probe scout. It's being as annoying as he really possibly can. Gonna have to run home now, I think. I mean, you can stay around a little bit longer, maybe for one heal cycle into an attack, but then you gotta get out if you're gonna keep him alive against that incoming Reaper. Yeah, nice attack there from Clem. Starts his factory in the main base, not gonna be slowed that much. It's a good choice. I never like it when people just let their minerals build. It's like you may as well start something else. Whether that's getting your next depot because you're approaching that supply block and you're gonna have to make more units or, you know, yeah, a bunker, a factory, whatever it might be. He's gonna go ahead and throw this one down. That's just for blocking some minerals. You might end up seeing the uh, Reaper get into it. If Clem's SCV is magically staying in the center there and not dying. That first Adept going to be popping out rather soon. Yeah, single shield battery up at the front. Some annoying stuff to deal with. Oh, dude. Are you serious? Trigger? That's funny. That's funny. I can't believe he snuck that thing back in and got a kill. Can't believe it. All right, pulls back to that shield battery. And yeah, the trick is you try to get the SCV, but you can always pop it back in super fast. You know, these are projectiles, so you definitely can dodge. And you might look at this and say, what is the point of this exactly? You know, you're spending money repairing, but one thing you're doing is stopping mining from these patches. And, you know, Trigger already has enough S enough probes that he definitely wants to get in there and, and mine. Oh, dude, I can't believe that slip by. Are you serious? He shouldn't get any probes with that, I don't think. Yeah. All right, knocks that down. Finally gets the SCV, but now it's double Reaper. Look at this. He's got to use overcharge even. Damn, dude. Triple Reaper? Really? That's crazy. He's out of shield batter energy. This is, like, this is starting to kill his units, man. Look at this. He's going to jump on these. He's going to get both of them. That was... Oh, wow. He just barely was get that one. That was one of the most effective Reaper bunkers against Protoss that I have ever seen in my life. If you're triggered right now, you're triggered. That is incredibly painful. Lots of lost mining time. The units got screwed up. He's had to focus so much on that. And you're getting a full scout of absolutely everything. Behind this cooked Banshee. Love to see it. Very, very cool opener there from Clem. So Banshee, Siege Tank, Marines being produced. Of course, that command center is up and running now as well. Trigger, not with a lot of options here, right? He starts his robotic support bay before the third Nexus. Yeah, it's kind of funny because you see that technically more was lost for Clem, but that was better for Clem as well. Funny how those things can work sometimes. All right, in comes the Banshee. Cloak is not ready as of yet. Uh, does he... Where is that? Okay, he brings the Observer over to follow. So that's that's really good. If that Observer had been far out and he had flown in, that could have been... That could have been a Reckoning. Third Nexus is going to be finishing up here as the Colossi being made. Clem gets his stim started. Doesn't feel like Clem has any move outs anytime soon. So Trigger should be pretty darn safe on getting the claw sign number he wants, getting into his next tech route as well.
All right, Stalker's being split up a little bit here. Wants to make sure that Banshees aren't just flying in and, and destroying his probe counts. Single Colossi. Colossi do look kind of funny. I like all like the stray whiskers sticking out of their heads. Or antennas or whatever they are. Now we wait a little bit. Double cloaked Banshee coming up towards that third base. Well, not cloaked yet, but they will be soon. Two Stalkers awaiting. I mean, two Banshees do win against two Stalkers, but it'll draw the other Stalkers over quickly, and obviously they can blink away before dying, so you don't really want to dive in there. Uh, now, this is what he has in mind, right? Start to move up. If, if, for some reason, Trigger pulls all of his units, those Banshees can fly in and do incredibly massive damage. Like, those two Stalkers are saving all of his probes right now. So continues to push out. Let's see when Trigger pulls his units and if he leaves those two Stalkers at the third. Comes back to check. Observer sees him. Oh, he gets the hit too. Oh, the Observer went out of range? No, it didn't. Just barely not. All right, starts to go for this. Sets up the Siege Tanks to take out this uh, Cybernetic Score. Zealot's not going to be super, super helpful coming up here. Five probes already going down. Look at this. Picks up. Well, he is going to lose all those units on the ground. We'll see how efficient he can be. But the drop in the main, it feels like it has to actually do a little bit now, right? Because he kind of sacrificed everything else. The Banshee's going to end up going down as well. So, so far, 10 probes. Uh, you know, the cybernetic score went down as well. He's basically losing his stalkers. Going to get out with about 10 supply. A little bit more. 13 supply or so. Uh, so that is a little bit of an issue. His cybernetic score is about halfway done. He will be able to make some more stalkers after that point. This unloads, has the mines there. <laughs> I like it. Had a pylon uh, queued to warp in there. That's kind of funny. That's actually an interesting pylon. Is that for warping in for an attack? I guess so. I guess it's got to be. All right, Templar Archives coming up. So Storm going to be our next source of splash. Well, he'll probably make an Archon first. Trigger does like to add an Archon or two. Strong play. Charges up onto the mine, so not necessarily the best thing right there. Oh, man, that was an excellent mine hit in the center of that Zealot Swarm. And if, yeah, look at that. Very well controlled there by Clem. Trigger has to back up. Dude, this mine. Oh my god. It killed the probe that made that pylon and then three of the warping in units. That is painful. Double Forge just now getting started. Clem is actually going to have 1 1 before any upgrades of his opponent. Two more Robos as well. So we're already getting into triple Robo here for Trigger. Which I like. I like. You know, PVT, it's all about getting uh, enough Robo units. Right, that additional command center for the fourth base being started before the fourth nexus here for Trigger. Of course, he's going to make an orbital and float it over at his leisure. Wait, did he cancel one of the robos? This is kind of weird. One robo finishing up and then one disruptor being made? I Actually, I do like triple robo plays. We've talked a lot about those. But yeah, I guess he's just going into double. Maybe it was a mistake when he had started three. One, one being upgraded as well. Armory's almost done for Clem, so he can actually get his 2-2 started. That's going to be good. Make sure he always has at least parity on upgrades. All right, decent split there, as that Disruptor caught him a little bit off guard. Does a scan to kind of check what's going on.
Oh, Clem killed the robo enemy. Okay, thank you. All right, now Clem kind of pushing back this little group of zealots that looks like it wanted to maybe harass on the side. Observer actually in a great location. Looks like Clem has no idea about it being there. Yeah, it's just kind of sitting there watching all of his army movement. The command center being floated over towards the fourth base as well, which is kind of nice. There's actually something big floating elsewhere as well. I think that might be another command center. I can't imagine what else you would have float on the side. Like on that left side near 9 o'clock? Is that a command center or did he lift off like a barracks or something? In factory? I don't know. Kind of weird. All right, does force a recall here. Two groups for Clem right now. I'm looking for any ends that they might have. Very nice zealot warping around. Dude, we're we're maxed out basically on these two players. Double medvac pickup. That's pre-scan, of course, checking for any observers that might spy on what he was about to do. Ooh, look at these four stalkers on the side. Oh my god. They get one of the medevacs. That whole plan just becoming unraveled from some nice unit placement from uh from trigger. Two two going up for both sides right now. That fourth base is down and mining. Yeah, that must be the factory over at nine o'clock. There's no way we would forget a command center that long. Getting ready for a liberator switch as well with that fusion core. All right, comes up with those Vikings. He is going to be able to kill off the claw side pretty well. The force field's actually working against trigger right now for sure. Blinks forward, has a lot of zealots, a, a huge amount of disruptors. Huge amount of disruptors. That is crazy. So, yeah, we're into the uh, Zealot Stalker Disruptor phase of this game. Dark Shrine should be the next thing coming down. And then we'll see if he wants to add in Stargate, something like that. Plus one, almost done for Liberators, as well as a Liberator range being started. Clem will probably want to rush up to that plus two to be able to two-shot Stalkers. Very powerful moment when you get the plus two for your Liberators. Oh, some nice flanking coming up, but Clem dodging everything just in the nick of time. Yeah, there's the factory. Thank you. Thank you, Mapu. <laughs> it was quite the mystery. <laughs> All right, there is that Dark Shrine that we've kind of been expecting for a little bit. That's kind of like the oftentimes the finishing of, of Protoss tech in this game. Of course, we don't really see any Psy Storm or anything. That is something that he could get additionally. Uh, and he is starting to actually carve through anything. The amount of disruptors is kind of absurd. Look at that disruptor count. It is craziness. Now, there's a counterattack here from Clem, a very big one. He's going to be able to eliminate that Nexus super, super quickly. And I think neither of them are going to stop quite yet. But don't forget, you do have recall. So a recall could bring enough home to really stop that army dead in his tracks. Whereas, you know, as far as Clem goes, that's going to be a lot more difficult. Uses a lot of uh, the disruptor balls there to blow up some add-ons. Looks like the robo is going to be falling. Oh, man. So much damage being dealt on both sides. Yeah, very nice disruptors. It, dude, Trigger is killing a hell of a lot, but so is Clem. Clem is actually going to kill, like, every mining base. It's going to be just the main base on both sides, I think. Dark Shrine, of course, in these base trade scenarios is incredibly strong. Okay, there are some Liberators here, but, yeah, he has way too much damage output. He's going to be able to kill all of that very, very easily. And Clem has to turn around and come home, I think. Look at this. A lot of probes running away. The probes are actually going to scout this, uh, well, this factory, I guess. Nothing nothing else there. Throws down his own nexus. 
Gonna go elsewhere. Uh, it looks like we don't have enough minerals for another Nexus at this point. So that's a very important location. Dude, this is a crazy game right now. Oh my God. Actually does get a good disruptor hit. Another one comes out, gets a Marauder. Big flank coming in here from Clem. Some of the disruptor balls do end up hitting, but Clem's flank looks like it should be enough. And GG is called sick game, sick finish.